Thank you, Acting Speaker. And uh, today I rise to contribute to the Firearms and Control of Weapons Machetes Amendment Bill 2024. And this bill supports uh, the Victoria Police to maintain community safety by reasonably expanding uh, police powers in relation to serving of FROs, that's firearm prohibition orders. It also contains an important amendment uh, to the Control of Weapons Act 1990 to clarify that a machete is a knife uh, and therefore a controlled weapon for the purposes uh, of this Act. Um, firstly, uh, I'd like to thank uh, the Minister for Police who's just come in to the chamber and at the table and of course his staff for all the work that they've done on this bill. Uh, um, there's a lot of work that's been done and I really appreciate that, that this bill's now before the House. Uh, and I've had many discussions uh, with the Minister for Police about machetes uh, in the past and in particular uh, some incidents that have gone on uh, in my electorate uh, of Melton uh, and uh, I'm very pleased to speak on this bill today. I'll go to the reason amendment uh, first and uh, that was raised by the member for Berwick. Uh, clearly I don't accept and I don't think there's any need uh, to accept that amendment. I think it's just a, a, a delaying the passing of this bill uh, before the House and I think one thing that we need to stress, and that is that Vic Poll were heavily consulted. And in fact, both Vic Poll and the Police Association uh, were supportive of this bill. And in fact, Vic Poll were the ones that requested this bill. They, did, they didn't um, uh, 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 seek uh, uh, pro prohibitive um, legislation. They wanted this controlled weapon uh, legislation. So, uh, you know, again, this government's working with our fantastic um, police force to deliver what they need to try and keep our communities safe. And of course, you know, we've heard a number of times during this debate that um, legally a machete is considered a, a knife and therefore it's, it is as a controlled weapon. And Acting Speaker, when you look up uh, uh, what exactly a machete is, you quickly learn that it's a broad, heavy knife used as an implement or weapon from Central America and the Caribbean. It has indeed a broad range of uses as an agricultural tool similar to that of an axe here in Australia for crops such as rice, sugarcane, corn, barley, buckwheat, oats and many others uh, can be easily harvested with a machete. But as we've seen, the ease with which um, tool becomes weapon in the eyes of those seeking to turn a profit is remarkable and I know and it's been raised that these machetes have been sold at local markets and I think down in the Laverton market uh, they were selling them on a regular basis and it's quite astounding that that was happening. Of course when you drive through Melton and the Melton electorate um, you can't help but notice the, the lack of sugar cane in our streets and in the paddocks around Melton. <laughs> so I don't see any reason for uh, people in Melton to have a machete uh, because as I say there's not much sugar cane uh, in our area. And there's, you know, there's no legitimate reason for anyone in Melton to carry a machete. I can't see any reason for it, uh, let alone anywhere else in the state, uh, unless you're a butcher or something like that that needs to chop meat. Um, and it beggars belief that anyone would claim self-defence as a reason to carry one. Uh, and, and if you're carrying a machete, um, clearly your aim is to harm someone or even to kill someone. That could be the only reason why you would want to carry one. Um, uh, and, and look, I might be one of the few members in this parliament and in this chamber that has seen the damage caused by a machete to human body. Uh, and I can go back to my days as a paramedic through the 80s and 90s in the western suburbs uh, where I saw absolute carnage across the western suburbs as a result of the use of machetes. And, um, you know, they these are, these are weapons uh, designed to not stab, but to chop people up, to chop things up. Uh, and machetes hack and they chop, and they're simple weapons that can kill. Uh, and I've seen defensive wounds uh, where people have put their arms up above their head to protect themselves from being uh, chopped with a machete, and arms amputated, arms you know, cut to the bone, nerves cut. Uh, and then if you Picture this as you know, a watermelon being split by a machete. Picture the head, a human skull being hit by a machete and what it does to a human skull. And I can assure you, it's not a nice view when you see that uh, happen. And unfortunately, during the 80s and 90s, I did see that happen in the western suburbs. Um, 
So again, I, I, can't, you know, I can only strongly support that, um, uh, this bill in regard to uh, reducing and stopping um, the purchase and the use of these particular weapons. And as I say, these are weapons in the wrong hands are designed to kill. Uh, this bill will make it uh, criminal and enforceable by the Victoria Police, and this bill will expand the powers of VicPol. To, again, and I raised it early on uh, in regards to serving firearm prohibition orders uh, or uh, FPOs uh, on, an, on a particular individual. And an FPO is only served when the um, Chief Commissioner believes that in order to protect the public, a person should not have access to a firearm or a firearm related item. And this could be based on an individual's criminal history uh, or that of their associates uh, and their behaviour or criminal intelligence. And of course, legitimate people that own firearms will not be caught up uh, in these orders. Uh, it's only people that do align themselves with criminals and also either have a criminal history themselves. Uh, and the FPO scheme is a proactive way for Vic Pohl to keep violence and other criminal activity off our streets. And we all want that. We all want our communities to be safe. Uh, we all want our criminal activity to be reduced. Uh, and this bill um, will allow Vic Pohl to uh, serve these FPOs in a prompt and efficient manner. Uh, and Acting Speaker, look, when you uh, have a 16-year-old or a 15-year-old or a 14-year-old um, going about their business in their local suburbs, brandishing machetes at each other. Uh, it's clear um, that there is going to be a long list of failures that can be pointed at uh, and clearly uh, a long list of damage that could be also pointed at. And we had uh, an incident in Melton only a few weeks ago where uh, at the Woodgrove Shopping Centre, uh, the police had to shut down the shopping centre for 30 minutes because two or three youths um, decided to think that they were going to attack each other with knives uh, that they, I think, uh, took from the local Woolworths store uh, within the shopping centre. And as an outcome of that, thank God nothing eventuated. The police handled the matter very quickly uh, and everyone was safe. Um, but as an outcome of that, Woolworths have decided, I think, across 70 of their stores, stores uh, to not stock knives anymore. Um, and I don't know which knives they refer to, but um, I'm assuming it's in their homeware section. So I think now that when I go to Woolworths at um, Woodgrove, I'll probably have to go to the counter and ask for my new cheese knife set over the counter. And I'll have to produce evidence that I'm a person that's capable of being responsible with a cheese knife set. But I thought it was a bit of an overreaction. Um, but I understand where they're coming from and it's about the safety of people and I suppose Woolworths are trying to send a strong message. Um, I should say that uh, one of the other things that come to mind when I was thinking about this bill was it's almost like the big fish that got away, you know, those stories that men tell about they caught the biggest fish and all this sort of stuff. Or, but I thought back to the Crocodile, Dund Crocodile Dundee movie where, you know, the the character in the States pulled out the knife said, and you know, Paul Hogan says, that's not a knife. So what does he do? He whips out a big Bowie knife and he says, that's a knife. And to me, it's, that's almost the culture around machetes where these kids have got them stuffed down their pants uh, and they wear these baggy pants so they can disguise what they're carrying. And it's almost like they pull their machete out when they're gonna try and violate someone and they say, that's a knife. Well, guess what? It is deemed to be a knife now under this legislation uh, and I'm pleased to say that this government is acting on it to keep our communities safe. I should say uh, and extend my thanks and appreciation to our VicPol members. They do an amazing job every day uh, under extreme circumstances sometimes. Uh, they work really hard to prevent the youth, and most of them are male youths in regard to um, using these types of weapons. Uh, there's a lot of prevention programs, they do a lot of community work, um, but unfortunately there's still an ele element of our community that think that they can resort to using these particular weapons to do damage against some of their peers or against some of their, I suppose, opponents as they may see it. This is a really important bill. I don't see any need for the reasoned amendment 
and I'll commend the bill to the House.